Hi, welcome to Revive Energy Podcast. Today is literally the last um, day of the month, and uh, it's the last time we're going to be talking about finding freedom through adversity. And I wanted to bring in a new guest, and I felt it would be great to wrap things up. I just want to say thank you, Lisa, for coming on and sharing your insight with us. Uh, thank you. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a uh, abrupt but i i felt when we were talking about what kind of themes and what we want to do each what i was trying to do each month this spoke to you so i really appreciate you coming on today no thank you i want to share with those who are listening always i always push this out if you are in crisis please seek appropriate professional help immediately the crisis hotline in the u.s 1-800-273-8255 but i do encourage all those because i do have listeners outside the country and in other areas of the world that you find what is available to you in your area obviously sometimes it's not ideal but you know yeah support comes in very different ways so i just want to ask um share uh, a quote uh, i know if you've listened um you, you know i always start off a quote to kind of prompt our discussion it's from rachel naomi remen and she says healing may not be so much about getting better as about letting go of everything that isn't you, all the expectations, all the beliefs, and becoming who you are. What comes to mind, Lisa, when you hear this quote? First of all, it's true. Yes. <laughs> I mean, healing, healing is, um, well, first of all, healing's a process. Mm -hmm. That's first off, it's a process, but healing also is, is change. Yeah. Healing is, is making a new normal mm -hmm. um, for yourself not defined by what was your past, but defined by what what, what, what will be, what is your future. So I, I completely agree with that, that healing is dynamic, mm -hmm. healing is a process, and healing, um, healing is change. I, I do like the word that you keep saying it change, because the one constant in life is change. And um, I think the ability, I think um, Albert Einstein said, Albert Einstein said, the intelligence is the the ability to change like it's not so much there we don't live static lives and i like how you also said dynamic because that's a lot of times people don't use that word a lot but dynamic is you don't have a static lives we don't have static relationships things keep keep changing and when we think about freedom through adversity i think that's the same thing you only kind of um go through it through adapting through those changes i really appreciate you sharing that um it takes courage to share let me just say that anyone who comes on here as a guest do not minimize it it is difficult because you're sharing sometimes even if it's just your insight recovery is messy a lot of times you know it's not as clean cut as we would like it um i've said personally i'm gonna ask you to tell you uh ask you how your experience was but my you know, helping people became my healing, but that didn't happen overnight. You know, a lot of times I struggled kind of wondering what recovery was, why couldn't I reach the destination? But the journey is all where all we learned the most stuff from. And I'm gonna ask you to kind of share, I'm not trying to skip over some things that I wanted to mention, but I wanna hear from you. Why do you feel recovery, and you said processing, why do you feel that recovery that in recovery processing is so important lisa can you share sure um you have to be able to own to own your life to mm -hmm. own who you are no matter how ugly it is or yeah. was or or can be you have to own it so you have to keep saying it you have to keep talking about it you know things can recur things mm -hmm. can come back there's not cures for everything. There's no solutions sometimes. There's only um, working through things, I'll say. Mm -hmm. um, so to me, with anything, mm -hmm. you have to keep, you have to own it. To me, that yeah. is step one. If you don't own it, I mean, I mean I'm very involved with mental illness and there's mm -hmm. a term that we use and I'm going to have to look down because it's a very long word, but the word... That's a nose, I mean, say it right, a nose agnosia. A mm. not agnosia. And yeah. what it means, you ever hear of that term? Yes, I have. It means lack of insight. Yeah. So if you don't know what mm -hmm. you have, who you are, you can't change it. Yeah. That is step one. And that's that's a term that they use for people who are severely 
mentally ill, bipolar, schizophrenics, etc. But that's, mm. you know, and it's very important yeah. to their recovery, their being able to function is insight. I, I like what you're saying because like, you know, I work in the field of, you know, mental health. And one of the things that I've noticed is they have to be an active participant. Whenever I'm talking to a client, when it comes to recovery, they have to be actively participating or it won't work. <laughs> like you say, for me, it's, it, it doesn't mean that you have to have, know everything. It's not that all the ducks have to be in a row. It, it's even more so, I don't, it doesn't matter that you're so frustrated. Just continue to talk to me, <laughs> continue to work it. And I think um, Benjamin Franklin says it best in this way. He says, tell me and I'll forget. Teach me, I may remember, involve me and I learn. I think involving people who are in treatment, people who are struggling, even myself, remembering when I was going through the adversity, I had to be included of the process. It won't stick. It will not stick. You may have a good couple good moments, but like you said in the beginning, life keeps changing and it, does, it doesn't stay static. And I think when we know this and we kind of uh, accept it, Put a, you know, you know, it does actually help with the process. I want to uh, kind of shift over and says, what has helped you in times of uncertainty, you know, and adversity when in your own life? I find this the uncertainty adversity question kind of mm -hmm. interchangeable because you know we went through a lot. This whole world has went through a lot and still is going through a lot. Uh, we could go that macro scale, our own little bubbles, our own micro scale. Mm -hmm. What what would you share? Um, what would you like to share, Lisa? What has helped me is my spirituality mm -hmm. greatly um, through adversity. Um, my family, but I'm not going to say my extended family. I don't have a very supportive extended family. Mm -hmm. I will say my kids. Yeah. And another. So I don't have that, but I do have that small group that has been supportive. Um, and I'm going to say confidence in myself. Yeah. And that's, you know, and really not really looking out to the world to kind of help me, but looking within me mm -hmm. to make me feel better. That's really. Yeah, yeah. I think I think uh, another thing I, I, I've been kind of pushing even, you know, I, I'm a leader in my church, too. And one of the things is providing a safe place. You know, it, it, it's there's this coin term. And I heard it. I've, I've stole it <laughs> sometimes. It's OK to not be OK. Why is that so reassuring? Because it's, it's you know, this, I, you know, I, I remember the term, get it right the first time. And, you know, it, it's, it's helpful at times. It depends on the context. But when it, when it comes to recovery, I never found it very helpful because there's going to be a lot of mistakes <laughs> along the way. It's, it's holding yourself accountable. And also, you know, like you said, that long word, I forget how to say that. Uh, <laughs> um, I that I, wait a minute, I'm going to say it again. Anas agnosia. Yeah, agnosia. <laughs> um, uh, and I find that um, that that knowing and under, going through the process of being a participant of your own journey of recovery, uh, I don't know, like purpose-driven recovery is very fascinating for me. It, it's, you know, you supposed to say spirituality. For me, we don't proselytize. I don't proselytize in this podcast, but I do ask the question why do you do what you do you know and i, I kind of shared because i feel um especially some of my friends who are substance use struggling um it can't just be not picking up a drink if that's if that's everything it gets very bleak so finding something to fill in that time this is one word my wife told me it's actually spanish it says va vacilando it basically means uh, it's just like you know when you throw the map away, you're just oh, you're just embracing the journey. Uh, it's it's one word that can't be translated in any other country or any other language. It basically means embracing the journey, not the destination, in a way, in a, in a very um, paraphrased way. But I find you know a lot of times when we embrace our recovery, when we understand that we're gonna have good days and bad days. But of those rainy, rainy days, like you said, adversity, the rain's pouring down. Sometimes the best we could do is like, okay, didn't work out today. I'm going to try again tomorrow. <laughs> That's all. And we do encourage it. I want to share this one quote. I want to hear, um, share, uh, ask you to share some of, a bit of your story with those who are listening, whatever you feel comfortable with, of course. But this 
But from Oliver Berkman, he says, True security lies in the unrestrained embrace of ins insecurity, in the recognition that we never really stand on solid ground and never can. It's kind of bleak, but I feel in a way it's you know, almost freeing at the same time. Because you're kind of understanding that all of us are facing different kind of, all of our families are struggling in different ways. All of us have our own idiosyncrasies, but all of us at the same time are, uh, you know, have this ability to embrace uncertainty. We have this ability to kind of, um, you know, go through the steps, whether whatever you're going through, recovery, um, you know, you know, my, um, I just find it very, the journey mindset, you know, uh, I think the Beatles said it, you know, a lot of times, a lot of life is what the times in between while we're planning things to do is we always focus on the destination. So mm -hmm. I'm going to turn it over to you, Lisa. I know I, I kind of, I'm the, I'm the mouthpiece in my marriage, <laughs> so I got to be careful, but I want to ask you, um, what would you like to share your own story with those listening today? And what ways have you been able to move forward when it comes to mm -hmm. finding freedom through adversity? Like you said, everything does continue to change. It does. And, and I'll tell you, just to add on to what you, you were saying, being adaptable mm -hmm. and another word, another big word, mutable means mm -hmm. being able to, is power. Mm -hmm. The ability to move with something that is a moving target or changing Mm -hmm. It's those of us that stay in the same mindset, complaining, mm. um, static, the word you use. Mm. You can't move forward like that. You have to accept that everything is changing and you need to change with it. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's, that is so the key mm. to moving forward and actually to power. Yeah. You own, you own, th then you can move forward with anything that happens. Yeah. If you're able to roll with it. If you can't roll with it, you're, you're not moving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's, I mean, so I completely agree with that. But um, for my story, I mean, my story is I'm just very involved in, in, with um, the mental health community. Mm. I'm mentally ill. I have a significant other who is mentally ill as well. Mm. Um, I've walked their journey with them. Um, it's not been an easy journey. I, you know, I've walked through through the school system with my son. I worked through diagnosis, through hospitalizations, mm -hmm. through arrests, through um, addiction, um, uh, just all different parts of mental illness, and they all go kind of get kind of together, and um, and it's been difficult. Yeah, it's been very difficult, and some days are downright horrible, mm. and some days are downright gorgeous. Yeah. So you you have to take both with that, mm -hmm. um, and it's just every day getting up and saying you know these people are worth it, and um, I'm not going to leave them, mm -hmm. and not going you know I'm going to walk beside them, mm -hmm. um, and both of them are stable, mm -hmm. both of them know that I'm not going anywhere, and I'm mm -hmm. tough and I have expectations, mm -hmm. but yeah. I'm abandoning them. Um, and you know, and nobody's cured. There is no cure for no, no cure for any addiction. There's no cure for mental illness. There's no cure. Mm. It mm -hmm. could, you know, it recurs when it recurs. It's episodic, mm. but you have to roll with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, I, one of the things that stu uh, struck me, um, especially during my recovery, was these only if statements we put on ourselves. Uh, you know, in the beginning, I talk about expectations. I just remember, um, uh, let me just, uh, I was reading this, a lot of times, I was reading this one book and it was talking about the urgency we put on ourselves. It was talking about urgency and like how we are more and more busy, <laughs> not allowed to do anything else. It's like almost our value comes from how busy we are. <laughs> but I just remember reading this one portion where it was talking about parenting. Right. And um, um, like how difficult it is, you know, they're like there's a lot of struggle and it's people especially struggling with their mental illness or substance use or even um, like, you know, before, like cancer wasn't even a big thing until like later on when people started caring. And I looked at it and I started looking at the big picture and sometimes we make mental health and substance use so confusing and complicated, but really it's about the people and the family around it. That's why we care about it. Um, I'm like, I'm not saying that we don't care about new studies and all that stuff, but 
it's really about the people. I remember this one woman had a terminally ill son who was three years old and had cancer. She said it was it was, it was horrifying, but also freeing because she could just love unconditionally whatever was left with that son. And I thought that was almost like it was like that bittersweetness, but at the same time, like we 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 have all these expectations that get passed on to us. I'm not saying all of them are bad. We try to better ourselves, but at the same time, when we really look at the end of the day, why do we care about a lot of these things? It's because of people around us. They mean a lot to us. Yeah. But, so I, I don't know. I, great term. I'm going to share with you. <laughs> Unconditional acceptance. Unconditional acceptance. I like Except- that. Yeah, so I went, so me and my significant other, him and I went to a, um, a therapist who was also a spiritualist because we want both. Yeah. And the person said, you know, as part of this journey that you will have together, you need to embrace for it to work. Uncond- yeah. Acceptance. Yeah. That is who he is, you know, and said he may be great for this period of time, but he may not be good for a certain period of time. If you're okay with that, you have to have an unconditional acceptance of his disease yeah you know one uh, one last anecdote i want to share is one of my friends he uh had a sister who was autistic nonverbal, all her life i went we went to see her she lives in the home the amount of explaining over explaining he did i'm like i'm just seeing her for an hour <laughs> She lived this whole her life. And I feel sometimes when we think of stigma, I feel sometimes that's the thing. We over explain. Uh, it makes me sad. It made me sad because this person lives this all. She can't communicate to the world like we would like to. And he's like explaining to, for my discomfort for what, an hour? Like for me, I, I, I kind of tell, I kind of see how, how that can translate with a lot of things when it comes to like families and when we think about, Oh, oh, don't worry. You know, he gets that way or she gets that way. <laughs> you know, people or people go through these processes sometimes and we try to keep things safe, but that's where the safe place model I've always loved. The idea that you can make mistakes because we realistically, it's impossible to <laughs> say you're not going to make any mistakes. But <laughs> as we kind of wrap things up, I really appreciate you, you know, your, 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 um, your insight and like just experience and how I can even hear from your voice just how how you're just determined and you know that things are going to change you're accepting it like you said unconditional acceptance is that what it is yeah I, I I really I really appreciate appreciate people like you who it's not that we ha- we may have great days and those are amazing but what I tell my my clients and those who I work with I say you know I just need you to be actively participating that's it I don't like I don't need you to figure this out today. We may not, but you know, this is a promise I'm making with you. We're gonna go on this journey together. I just want to say um, any last things you want to share with those listening, Lisa. It was so wonderful to have you on. Um, folks can check out my blog. I want to say that, which is yeah. illness.com, um, and have a lot of stuff about the journey with with it on it, and. Um, no, it's a, it's a pleasure talking to you as well. Mm. And I just want to mention one thing about, you know, that person explaining to you their child. You know, it's a shame that we have to do that. Yeah. Because folks don't accept, you know, that they <laughs> yeah. don't someone who is on the spectrum. I have a yeah. son spectrum as well. I mean, they, they just, and you feel like you have to explain it away because people are so uncomfortable mm. with addiction, with mental illness. And, and mental illness and addiction do go hand in hand. And you know yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's so sad how uncomfortable they are. They think they're going to catch it. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't catch that kind no, of. No, no. And I always tell people, well, how do you deal with them all the time? Because I don't. I'm not going to catch it. It's mm. not. I am what I am. They are what they are. And I mm. love what they are. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and at the same time, like if you, if you're if you you know, there's sometimes there's inconvenient moments, but when you look through all that, when you pass all that, you're thinking this person's really struggling what's really going on oh, that when they're talking out or they're speaking out or they're you, you notice the little things not so much what they're saying but what they're not saying a lot of times so so i i just want to say thank you lisa again for coming on you know this month uh, about finding freedom through adversity sounds so counterintuitive but i think it's very much more on point than we like to admit you know we have to maintain maintaining doesn't mean we stay static it actually means the opposite maintaining means we have to stay dynamic ever-changing 
again thank you lisa all those the the information with your blog um just share with me and i'll put it in the notes when this gets posted but i just want to share with those who are listening remember stay updated with revive ministries on our website revive ministries fl.com and i want to leave you with this one last quote from jk Rowling for those harry potter fans and it's um numbing the pain for a while will make it worse when you finally feel it